Hi, Elena. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Um, I wanted to thank you again for taking part in our workshop. Um, so the first question I have for you today is uh, how did you enjoy the workshop? What, what was maybe your, your favorite thing about it? I think it was interesting to bring uh, leading researchers from both uh, industry and academia to talk about the uh, future of uh, photonics and related technologies and present their, their exciting results, uh, recent exciting results, and we can see whether trajectories for academia and industry are, are aligned in that space. Nice. And so the topic of this workshop was silicon photonics. How do you see that transforming the future of technology? Well, photons are uh, great in uh, trans transmitting information past and with minimal loss. And there, of course, uh, photonics is, is always going to be one of the critical pieces of uh, sensing uh, systems and networking. Um, and uh, as we all know, it's finding more and more place in uh, mobile technology and also in data centers. Uh, going forward, I see that uh, I, I'm convinced that we will see more and more photonics inside of uh, mobile devices, you know, augmented reality glasses, cell phones, but also inside of computing technologies, not just to connect different servers in data centers, but also to connect different um, components inside of uh, computers, um, different cores in a processor, processor and memory. Um, this is, of course, uh, on chip and chip to chip interconnects that have been heavily discussed at the workshop as well. And uh, I also see photonics as a key um, piece, enabling piece for pretty much all quantum technologies. All platforms, uh, all quantum technology platforms um, have bottlenecks related to photonics and all of them, even if they don't really um, operate uh, by employing uh, optical photons, they have to be interfaced to optical networks in order to be uh, to build quantum internet eventually or to connect these systems. So photonics will play a crucial role in new computing uh, technologies, in new uh, quantum technologies, but also will uh, find more and more um, applications inside of mobile devices and uh, classical computing devices. Cool. What do you think some of the um, biggest challenges in making silicon photonics a default for some of these, these technologies that you mentioned? Um, well, interestingly, uh, actually, state-of-the-art photonics uh, is uh, still not optimal in many ways in terms of the energy consumption uh, for particular operating speed, in terms of the footprint, in terms of the robustness. Uh, to the environment, temperature variations, which is inevitable when you have photonics operating inside of complex systems that also employ electronics or inside of sensing systems, right, that are deployed uh, in cars or, or uh, outside in, in when the environmental conditions change. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in the photonics community in general, uh, there is a lot of effort these days on using different optimization or artificial intelligence techniques to make better photonics or robust photonics, smaller footprint, new functions. But in general, for a lot of applications, we really need um, a photonics that is um, uh, of higher efficiency than what we have today, um, because it's uh, quite pointless to lose so much uh, um, uh, power, optical power at couplers, interfaces, different components inside of the system. So there is a big push in increasing efficiency, but also increasing robustness, reducing footprint of photonic components so that you can really increase the scale of photonic systems, integrate a lot of photonic components and also operate them in these realistic conditions. Cool, thank you. And the uh, last question is, how do you see applied materials contributing to the innovations needed to enable silicon photonics? Well, maybe more broadly in photonics, uh, of course, there is uh, silicon photonics has been uh, the, the workhorse of photonics, integrated photonics research because of uh, commercialization of silicon on insulator about 20 years ago. And of course, because silicon is the, the main platform for in general electronics, and it makes sense to, uh, it has made sense to pursue silicon photonics, but silicon is also not uh, necessarily the optimal material for some of the applications. For example, in quantum technologies, 
um, in many applications in quantum technologies, silicon cannot be used because uh, the operation has to happen at the wavelengths that are above the silicon band gap. So there will be a lot of absorption. And there are, in fact, some other materials that are more suitable uh, for those applications, both because they host uh, high quality quantum bits. Um, for example, silicon carbide, you know, or diamond, uh, but also because for some of the applications in atom-based quantum technologies or ion-based quantum technologies, we simply need photonics that operates at visible wavelengths, and silicon is not a suitable material there. And um, I see uh, applied materials as a company that can contribute to both improving silicon photonics for applications where silicon is suitable. And of course we use silicon whenever that's possible, but also developing um, high quality um, substrates and new materials for photonics for applications where we can't use silicon. So that includes some of the materials that I was mentioning, for example, silicon carbide. Um, which is uh, really a key material for both visible photonics and for quantum technologies. Awesome. Again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it today. Thank you. Thank you, Erica.